Extraordinary Phenomenon Investigations Council presents Epic Voyages. Come join us as we enter and experience the great mysteries of the world with tonight's host, Kevin Cook. Kevin Cook, your visiting host for Epic uh, Voyagers tonight. That's good to be with you. I, I have a regular show, the Kevin Cook Show, at the same time on Tuesdays, but I'm filling in tonight, and I'm glad to do it. Epic is a very good organization. It's, <laughs> it's been amazing, the, uh, the amount of information and, and diversity of information they cover, from UFOs to ghosts to you name it, and uh, I can certainly endorse it, and I'm an Epic member as well. I've got this really interesting Facebook page. It's Kevin Cook. I'm the guy in the red shirt with the book signing. Lots of good stories every day. Uh, UFO footage. Uh, there's a show by Jesse Ventura's defense of his and also, by extension, our civil rights being denied by the federal courts in it. Uh, just a lot of different things. Uh, I recommend you check it out, uh, Kevin Cook on Facebook. Now, and <laughs> as I was mentioning just before the show, the political scene has turned to be a little more paranormal than the paranormal. A good ghost story is beginning to sound a little more palatable than uh, the Republican nominees. Uh, Rick Perry, of course, he's had uh, well-known faux pas lately and uh, mental absences, but uh, Herman Cain, the other uh, front runner, uh, had one as well on NBC News <clears throat> where they asked him a question about Libya, and Libya was a topic of uh, conversation just in the... Excuse me, I'm going to drink something. I've got a little, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a little allergy situation, so you have to bear with me. Ty. But anyhow, Libya was a question that came up in the debate just Sunday, and it is just Monday. <laughs> and Herman Cain was asked what, how he would differ from Obama in his response to Libya. And he sat there like he'd been shot with a shotgun for about a minute straight. <laughs> like they were asking him the secrets of uh, nuclear physics or something. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> it, it was kind of embarrassing and silly. <laughs> but <clears throat> now understand, this guy Cain... It's the same one that said he's the, one of the black Cook brothers, and that's not like the Irish Cook like me. It's like the German Cook, K-O-C-H, that are based in Kansas City, and they are the Tea Party backers. So, uh, <laughs> you know, if, some, if one was going to say you're not, you know, backed by vested interests, uh, Herman Cain wouldn't be the one. But anyhow, we've got a very unusual situation last uh, in this uh, Republican nominee situation, and uh, there may be some paranormal connected to it. I just haven't heard it uh, filter through yet, but keep that app keep appraised of that. And tomorrow night, I'm going to have Christopher Balzano on uh, at the same time, and he's a very interesting author who wrote a book on the Bridgewater Triangle, which is a area in Massachusetts uh, that includes the Hokomoke Swamp and everything goes on there from UFOs to <clears throat> Bigfoot to uh, you name it. And now I've got some excellent, turning into some real excellent friends and good guests, uh, Terry Albright and Peter Gatilla, and they're Bigfoot hunters and uh, and a lot more. And I'd like to introduce them. And uh, how are you doing, guys? Oh, we're, we're doing well. <clears throat> when you were speaking about the, the political scene... Uh, I, I must say, I'd much rather look after Bigfoot. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Good old I mean the, yeah, I, and none of it makes any sense to me, but, uh, you know, really I'm, just, I'm just a voter. <laughs> well, I know, but, you know, I remember back to, uh, I mean, all the way back to Jimmy Carter era, and you used to have right. presidents who would have news conferences, and they stopped having news conferences when George Bush would stumble all over himself and embarrass himself. So he stopped. He only had like three, if you remember. <laughs> and, and they stopped right. that. But you know, Bill Clinton would have news conferences, and you know, golly guys, I mean, this gets back to just common sense. I mean, if you're of just going to elect, right. a, you know, a, you know, hire somebody just to work for you, and they're going to be in a managerial capacity. Right. If you just ask the manager of the McDonald's restaurant you own, or what would you do in this case, Joe? And he sat there. 
just in stark, <laughs> glassy-eyed silence for now, a minute straight. He's like, well, yeah, Joe, exactly. I don't think you got it. Hit the door, Joe. But anyway, um, I'm not saying my Democrats are perfect, but they're not that stupid. And uh, anyhow, uh, that, you know, of course. Uh, yeah, well, you know, yeah, contrary to popular opinion, we're not all perfect. <laughs> No, but uh, still, I mean, I've never seen an adult applying for any kind of job in any capacity that would just stare with glassy eyes at the camera. <laughs> I mean, I'm almost thinking <laughs> yeah. there's some kind of voodoo going on here, <laughs> Peter. <laughs> that might be the case, actually. Well, you haven't, you haven't seen Peter and myself on camera yet, though, so. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but this is crazy. Well, I know. God, especially for such a high office, and uh, I don't know, man. I wish I had well, I mean, an answer to it. If, if they were, if you were interviewing people to be the next general that would be the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and they said, right. General so and so, what would you do in this situation? He just stared at the wall like he'd been gut shot. Yeah, I think yeah. General, well, I think you need to go home. <laughs> so, anyway, I, that's what I, we got. <laughs> but now, you no, see, Kevin. Well, okay, back to Bigfoot. Uh, Kevin, you're a lot of fun. <laughs> well, now, now you told me the other day that you you had this story that was uh, about a kidnapping overseas it sounded really spicy Do well you yeah know? yeah you know we're our group is made up of uh a lot of different um skills and abilities i mean we're researchers generally we we look after phenomena and i've been doing it for over 40 years so is terry we've been there done that we've seen a lot of things experienced a lot of things well we i also uh began working with psychics uh in the late 60s and early 70s and uh, set out then uh, to develop my own training <clears throat> course for people who wanted to know a little bit more about what goes on with them psychically and inwardly. I wrote a book about it uh, called Your Personal Guide to Psychic Development. It's available now. And it was sort of a horn book at the time, a class book that I used uh, in the field of training ordinary folks um, to use uh, their intuition with a little more uh, appointed accuracy. And so that just sort of kept sweeping through and everything that I've done and <clears throat> that Terry and I and Tom have done over the years. And um, we ended up uh, working on a number of missing persons cases. And our accuracy is in the record. Uh, we've done pretty good work along those lines. Well, we were asked uh, by the family of a missing young woman. Uh, she went missing in April of last year in Nepal and so we put our group to work on that case and I must tell you it has been probably the most disturbing uh, project we've ever done primarily because um, and I'm going out on a little limb saying this but the government of Nepal unfortunately let's just say it's riddled with corruption and even though we were coming up with valid insights, we believe, we do a thing called map reading. Many psychics out there and intuitives know what that's about. You can locate people or animals and so forth uh, by using a, a two-dimensional map, and you psychically tune in to the, the region, and you attempt to pick up on the location uh, of the individual. So we did that, and we came up with a bunch of locations, and... Not one of them has been thoroughly investigated. And we've just been up against serious frustration with this. Because this young woman, I'll give you an example. Uh, One night I had a a, a psychic, really uh, clear psychic vision of this young woman. And her arms are out and she's saying, help me. And I I have to tell you, I wept. I wept after that. It was so moving to me and disturbing. So our little group, Terry and Tom and I and Phyllis and and, uh, Allison Souter and Samara Osmar, we all put set to work trying to do our best to locate uh, this young woman. Now, of course, the, you know, the, the average mind of the average person, when somebody's gone and you hear nothing from them and it's in a third world country and blah, 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 blah chances are they're oh, dead. No. Well, we kept getting, no, she's not. And that added a complication to the entire scenario. So anyway, we're we're working on it now again, um, uh, on the hope that maybe uh, there's some consideration. I don't know if I even should mention this, but uh, well, let's put it this way: we're going to take a more active role in this and actually get into the middle of the melee. Uh, we're working with a couple of government agencies, so I, I really can't 
say too much about this uh, uh, without telling the enemy. <laughs> you can tell him what he said about our readings, though, what Paul Sacco, the father, said about yeah, yeah, our the, work. The, the, the name of the victim is Aubrey Sacco. She's a beautiful, young Colorado woman, uh, a degreed college graduate, and a seeker, she very, is very, was very, is very, I better not say was, that's going to disturb me all night, is a, um, a, a devotee of uh, certain spiritual things, and she's a poet and a musician, and uh, we, you know, what, which, which, which uh, you mean Paul's recent comment? Well, the, the comments that he's made, Based upon our our readings oh, well, on Aubrey and her yeah life. yeah he was just blown away by our accuracy now keep in mind this is a this is someone we don't know we've never known this person personally we had no background on this individual we knew nothing of her uh, past and yet in the course of doing our readings and by the way I have a, an account of all this so we've kept uh, uh, clear, clear records of all this well, he was just amazed at how how much we we knew about his daughter. And uh, and this was all from doing psychic work at a distance. We're in California, there in Colorado, and so we've gotten some considerably good feedback uh, on it that we were on the beam, if you will. So we're still going to be continuing on with this, and um, God willing, uh, we're. But I'll tell you this: if we don't start getting some action out of that third world corrupt country, uh. I'm going to go over there myself. <laughs> well, you know, you <laughs> might, might come to that. Now, I know just this week they had that baseball player that was uh, kidnapped. Yes. Yeah. 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 That was a I, big yeah. issue there. It's going on the all the time. You know, Kevin, this is one of the things when I wrote my book, Contact with Beings of Light, I had many experiences with these beautiful beings uh, that I consider to be angelic. And one of the main concerns they have is this endless pain being leveled upon society, upon people. And I'll, I'll tell you, they weep at this, especially the abuses against children, uh, women, for example. Women are, you know, we it, it takes all kinds, I understand that, but women by and large are very close to the angels uh, for a number of reasons. I think, uh, I think, did, did you and I discuss uh, uh, Mary, uh, the mother of Jesus, at some point? Sure, sure. Yeah, well, this, 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 I had an experience with this. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be losing listeners here, but, you know, I've been a practicing sensitive all my life. It started in childhood, and I have always had lots of psychic experiences, and I had a psychic experience with Mary once. <laughs> And it completely uh, uh, um, overwhelmed me. Uh, not because just the visuals alone. I mean, this was a tiny woman, a beautiful woman, but small in stature, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> it conveyed something of, of of a strong impression of the vulnerability of women. Yeah. And uh, I, the light beings have conveyed this message not only to Dorothy Isaac, uh, with whom I worked you know, for nine years in a research relationship, but in my own experiences as well, uh, how painful it is for them uh, of, of the pain and suffering being leveled on women and yeah, children. Really oh, it's, it, it, you know, and yeah, then kind of for, for us to get involved with Aubrey Sacco, this young, beautiful girl, uh, uh, and of course, I won't go into the details here, but you know she she has been abused and hurt. Yeah. And for the for for us, having worked with the light beings now, our group in total, um, this you can't believe the double jeopardy this put us all in. I mean, just the pain alone was was unspeakable. But we're still oh, working I know. on. See, when I, even when I even when I talk of uh, oh, you know, I've you know read issues, but with Arab women and. In their countries, and right, right, their exactly, culture, and, and the whole thing. Yes, of course, oh, you have to be it, empathetic to that. You do. It's unspeakable, man. It is. It really is. Well, you know, Demi well, Moore I'm, and uh, Ashton Kutcher have been working in the human trafficking uh, field, trying to to be of help in that in that area. Well, good for them. And we're kind of, you know, stuck betwixt and between right now. We really need to go over there, uh, for whatever reasons. The uh, the government just hasn't cooperated. So and they changed the their point, stories. Yeah. They, they changed their stories, and there's a lot of lying. And 
uh, I mean, listen, I, we had contact with the top psychic in that country and people who know something about the East <laughs> Indians and what have you. It's a very religious, very spiritually oriented country although good parts of it are heaped in squalor and other problems. But nevertheless, it's the seat of a good deal of early mysticism and so forth, you know. But they, 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 are, they are completely unable and afraid to do anything. And I talked or had communication with the top, I'm not going to mention the religious affiliations of this man or anything like that, but he was like the supreme uh, uh, leader of, of all things mystical. And even he wouldn't give us an answer, a clear answer. Huh. Unbelievable. I, wonder, I, I, guess I, kidnap, I, I guess the kidnappers or abductors may be, you know, well-placed politically or something. Well, like that, that. that's, that's, that's a possibility. That's a logical insight, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's awful. And I, I have great respect for, for, for Hillary Clinton, for example. Or any representative of state who's got to deal with these people. Yeah. You can't deal with them on terms that you and I might be accustomed to in our in our country. It doesn't work that way. They lie as a matter of course. <laughs> it's all about greasing the palm. Money. Yeah, that's it. Well, I mean, perhaps. Uh, I, I hope. I wish you all very uh, good luck in your endeavors. I mean, I no, guess. Thank you. Well, they, I, I, I guess I maybe I shouldn't ask, but I. Is it possible to answer whether a ransom's been demanded or that that has happened, that has happened. Oh. but we are unable to track any of it uh, a A government law enforcement agency has just concluded that it is a hoax, but you know we have we have Kevin we have a track record, and I'd be willing to prove it to anybody who has any doubts about it. We can locate people. You know, I, I started using this location technique, which is a purely intuitive process, but I started using it in the search for Bigfoot 35, 40 years ago. And that's what kind of keyed me into the fact that we've probably got multiple phenomena at work. Oh, okay. We would zero in on Bigfoot, right? But he was always one step ahead of us. <laughs> now, we've looked for missing persons. We've found... I just not long ago found a missing cat in the wilderness of Colorado, right? <laughs> yeah. These people lost this cat, and it's in the wilderness. Now, we found that cat. Now, we can locate things. We know that. We have a track record. But when I started working on Bigfoot, when we all started going out, and, you know, it's very time-consuming and even exhausting and sometimes even perilous, we were always... <laughs> one step behind this very canny entity. And that said something very clear and distinct to me very early on, because if, if hunters, so-called hunters, are going on out there, you know, they're going to bag themselves a point, uh, you know, a place in history kind of thing. Well, if using our intuition and the skills that we have, we were always just behind these creatures. Well, there was not a chance that any hunter was going to be able to do this. Because these creatures are able to pick up on any intention. They're able to tune into whomever is in the region, uh, looking after them or not. Well, you know, it sounds one, you, you hit a responsive chord. And another thing I heard of uh, or run across before is that, well, I've, I've mentioned on other shows that they have the, uh, the Skinwalker Ranch in Utah, where uh, right. Alan Culliher and, and uh, mm. Knapp had written the book on, very good book, Hunt for the, what's the Way of right. the Skinwalker, The Hunt for the Skinwalker, or something mm. like that. Yeah. And, uh, Maybe it's just Skinwalker Ranch. I've forgotten the exact title of the book. <laughs> but anyhow, uh, what it is, though, is Bob Bigelow, a uh, billionaire Vegas uh, land man and mm. investor, big businessman. He owns Bigelow Aerospace as well. He uh, funded a eight-and-a-half-year research project on the Skinwalker Ranch. And they, they, the basic synopsis over all this experience was that it was also a step ahead of the investigators – all the time, and it was actually playing with them. Yeah, you know, right. They'd, they'd set some little mm -hmm. trap, and this wouldn't work, and then something like, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. some little practical joke was connected with the, mm -hmm. the trap not working and what have you. Right. And uh, so, yes, there is kind of a mischievous, kind of mentally very 
all-knowing kind of context to it. Well, I'll tell you. I mean, there's no question in my mind. I've been at it a long time. These people out there know me. I knew many of the early uh, pioneers in the field. Uh, I've had contact with most of them, uh, directly or indirectly. And I've spent a lot of time in the field. All of this I can prove. All of this is a matter of record. And this is no easy hunt. And then I began to stumble on the appearance of UFOs in and around many of these traditional areas. Of course, yeah. keep in mind, you know, they wanted to string me up and nail me to the wall simply by simply for suggesting this sort of thing. But I know I was in the field. I mean, I've had people come up to me in recent years and say, I've been a researcher for 40 years. And I haven't seen anything like that. You know? And I'll tell them, well, okay, I, I, they will tell me their name, and I will say, well, where were you? I was in the thick of it for all those years, and half of these people well, had know, never I've heard of it. Well, you know, I've heard that, too. I, the Skinwalker Ranch had UFOs uh, also connected. Oh, they to did, people. certainly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, the, uh, the yeah. ethic group has a, the ethic group that, uh, of course, sponsors this show and uh, mm -hmm. that uh, I'm a member of. Has, is also now Ken hasn't told me where in Pennsylvania that it's located, but I oh, want to get in on this. Right, Pennsylvania is a lovely spot for this, and uh, it is. Uh, That's what I understand. <laughs> no, no question about it. A lot of a lot of stuff happening there over many many years. You know, I'll, yeah, I'll tell you, Ken. I'm anxious to get in on it. I, I want Ken to include me in on whatever investigation. <laughs> of course, you know. Oh, it's, yeah, we'll it's, take it's, you out. We'll let or either either group will take you out. Well, it's only a few <laughs> miles from New York anyway. I can. With there you go. Uh, it's, no, it's I, it's I uh, it's alive with it. I mean, uh, you know, back in 1973, I had my first conversation with Stan Gordon. I don't know if he remembers it or not, but uh, he was he was in, in Pennsylvania, Westmoreland County, and he made an interesting remark, which I thought was wonderful, because in '72, when I was with Stanton Friedman in the UFO Research Institute, which at the time was in Lawndale, California, yeah. he. Uh, I had come to the conclusion simply by looking at the reports that had been submitted to us that there seemed to be a proximate relationship between these phenomena. And that's, you know, that blew me away. I mentioned it to Stan, and he said, don't bother me with two mysteries. I got my hands full with one. <laughs> well, you know, the UFO guys are that way anyway. The UFO guys like uh, Janet Sears yeah. is a lovely lady. Oh, that's okay. You know, I understood. I like Stan Friedman. And I, I, I always have. Well, he introduced Peter and myself back in 1970. Yeah, yeah. Terry called up on the phone and he says, "Hey, I saw something weird." And I said, "Really? Where do you live?" He said, "Hollywood." And I said, "Well, call me again later." <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> the thing is, Janet Saylor, uh, she's a friend of mine. She has that uh, Taos Paranormal Conference just had it up in October, and yeah. there is a like a little, little uh, like the Hatfields and McCoys. The UFO people don't like the paranormal people, and vice versa. It's kind of a funny little. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, it's always been that way, but the problem is the UFO groups now are a little more flexible, uh, I must admit. The Bigfoot crowd, I mean, you know, uh, well, Tom will tell you at some point, if we, if we can uh, reach him, that we've all been, been all but lynched a few times. You know, the Bigfoot crowd, these are a swarthy bunch of guys. I mean, you know, they're not all in the media, and you don't hear about all of them, you know, but, uh, I mean, these, some of these guys are mountain men, you know what I mean? And uh, yeah. one guy comes up to me, he's about six foot seven, weighs about 300 pounds, and he says to me, hey, follow my piccolo. <laughs> was, this guy was way up in the mountains. He said, if you hear my piccolo, run. <laughs> but, you know, the, the, it's a whole different crowd. It's a whole different mentality. Some of them are really nice guys, men and women. And I'm a, support, a supporter of what they do, whether or not they agree with me. Because, you know, it's just like the world of the paranormal. Same thing. We've got to really respect and, and honor one another because we're all after the same thing in some measure or another. You know, so it's pointless to be. I uh, but I think it's we, we also make let the listeners know that a lot of this stuff just overlaps. It just flat does. Yeah, it sure does. Of course. Yeah, that's the uh, funny part of it. You know. Well, we've dealt with that for years. You know, Bigfoot or UFO, either one, the the researchers seem to be at each other's throats half the time, which is probably why we haven't gotten any further than we have with the research. Well, I, well, Bigfoot. I mean, uh, UFO people tend to. Uh, not like each other in within, within their own little communities. I've never seen such. A, it shows you the perversity of human nature. I guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it, it, 
Yeah, exactly. You know, Kevin, that's what I said to the, you know, the Bigfoot crowd. I mean, they said, ah, UFOs, we don't believe in UFOs. It's all nonsense, blah, blah, blah. I went through this for several years, right? <laughs> and I said, oh, I see. So you think nothing of chasing in the dark after 10 to 12 foot tall, smelly, red glowing eyed creatures, but you yeah. can't grasp UFOs. I mean, I, you know. Oh, I mean, gee. <laughs> Well, yeah, what, what did Adam Smith say? I think Adam, didn't Adam Smith call it a mind problem? I love that book. He, was, he, he wrote a book called uh, Powers of Mind, I believe it was the title. But uh, yeah, he said that it's, not a, it's not a reality issue. It's a mind problem. <laughs> yeah. Well, some He's people don't right. believe anything. I mean, uh, they just, if it's staring them in the face, they, if it doesn't get yeah. their perception, they, they want to ignore it. Now, actually, we're just about coming up to our first break, but uh, on that Marion uh, vision that you had, uh, right. Of course, you know, I've written a book on Marian apparitions are real, it's called. Right. But uh, Now, sometimes she was seen very frequently with a small stature connected with her. Yeah. And, of course, fairly attractive from most accounts. But right. uh, did you, uh, I guess this was kind of an awesome kind of uh, experience then, huh? More than some others? Oh, let me tell you, that was one of the most moving experiences. Keep in mind, I was raised Catholic. But I'm not a churchgoer. I come from an Italian background, you know, and I'm pretty much running amok on my own free will kind of thing. But uh, she appeared to me, and man, I'll tell you, it said something very profound, and uh, that could probably be the topic of an entire show. <laughs> it could very well. We might hold it for this show, too. Who knows? But for the latter end of it, but 